This was almost an impossible situation for Justin Fields to thrive in, yet he gave us some awesome moments. In fact, like Byron Pringle was literally the wide receiver they brought in last offseason to try to elevate this team. And even with that, this team didn't really understand what they had in Justin Fields or how to cater an offense around him until they had, you know, that mini bye week and start implementing some of these designed rushing packages. So to me, at least, we've found out a little bit more of Justin Fields and who he is as a player. And it's not just us watching him. It's that organization has as well. Yeah, to me, it's we've learned that Justin Fields could be a special rusher yes. like Mike Vick, Lamar Jackson level rusher, and that they have a whole bunch of, of capital, both in cap space and now with the first overall pick to surround Justin Fields, we think. Uh, the problem is defense. They have some pieces in the secondary, young pieces. But up front, they have basically nothing. And their offensive line has been bad. And their skill group, I think, is still very bad. I think Darnell Moody and Chase Claypool are like number two, number three receivers. Uh, Cole Komet, I think, is a NFL starter, but not a difference maker. And unfortunately, that that pick that they traded for Chase Claypool is now a first overall pick, uh, which is not my favorite use of that. But the, the, the front office has to make a big boy decision. Do they like Justin Fields more than Bryce Young? What are the trade packages between those two as well? That leads me into the other part of this. And you mentioned the Chase Claypool trade. It's now the 32nd overall pick. That will be a second rounder, so no fifth-year option attached to it. And just quickly, they did find a couple of young offensive linemen. You know, Braxton Jones, who's a rookie. Tevin Jenkins really found a home at offensive guard where it kind of felt like his career trajectory was headed off the rails. So that's good two young pieces they have along the offensive line. You outlined it. What they have to do now is build a team. Like if you add together the $100 million in cap space, which they started working towards last offseason when they didn't bring anyone in, plus the number one overall draft pick and the draft capital associated potentially with that, this is going to be the largest investment of resources in NFL draft history. They have 30 free agents on their roster. The big question, okay? They don't pick again from one to 56 to 65, then 103 and 134. That's really not from a pure numbers count of early round draft capital. A lot of investment they can input into this team when you think of just how bad the roster is. And they're in this crossroads moment, Hayden. And let's have this conversation because it's going to run through the airwaves on Twitter for the next few months. I love Justin Fields. He is a developing thrower, right? They trust him in the red zone more and more this season. But just point blank period. Where do you think this is going to go? Should they? trade the number one overall pick and acquire those resources and shorten the gap again to 56 and 65? Or do they take the quarterback that maybe they believe in more with a higher draft evaluation and then trade Justin Fields, who is less of a mystery box as of this moment? So I think fantasy people like Justin Fields more than the NFL did. The NFL draft Justin Fields was in kind of tells us that. I'm not sure you would get a whole lot from Justin Fields. Maybe like a mid first round pick or something like that. To me, like you said, the roster is so depleted that to me, why throw Bryce Young or, or CJ Stroud into this mix? You are multiple years away still with this. So I would be trading that pick, like you said, the from first pick down to late second. That's a pretty big difference. My number one goal for the Chicago Bears, get a team to send you their next year's draft pick. You basically free roll Justin Fields this year. You get him some more talent around him. You get another year of development. We see year three breakouts all the time. And if Justin Fields doesn't develop as a quarterback and they're still bottom three in all these passing metrics, and this is a passing league, even if you are Justin Fields, then you will be picking really high again. Or the team that you're trading for that had CJ Stroud or Bryce Young, rookie quarterbacks sometimes don't do very well. And I would want as many bullets to potentially have a top five pick the following season. So if they can get an, a 2024 first rounder, get Caleb Williams or uh, the kid from North uh, Carolina, that to me would be the win. There's a few ways of looking at it. I think no matter what, you are rarely in a position to select the top quarterback evaluation on your board and they are in it. You know, they just also so happen to have a quote unquote special talent that we've talked about this season. Now, as much as I can call some special skills that Justin Fields has, I will readily admit he's not a perfect player. You know, no, no, he no. still has a lot of improvement to go. But I think the core of this is just what is your quarterback evaluation? And if you think Bryce Young is better than Justin Fields, if you think 
Uh, CJ Stroud is better. If you think Will Levis is better. To me, the easy answer is to take those guys. I can't sit here and say that's anyone else in the Bears organization. That truly is a mystery box. But I've seen a lot of just, it doesn't necessarily matter about that quarterback evaluation. And this is going to reset the quarterback contract window or like let them battle it out and quarterbacks retain their value when they're traded, even if they're moved on from, I don't really buy any of that. Like to me, again, the root of the discussion starts and ends with, if you think young Stroud Levis are better than fields, if they are, you take them. If not, which I think is the more likely outcome, you stick with Justin Fields and start actually building a team and start building a team around the strengths of Justin Fields. I think the evaluations definitely matter. I also do think the price point of what somebody's going to offer for that first round pick also has got to be part of this discussion. And they're going to offer more for that number one overall selection than they are for Justin Fields. Going back to the original point that you made, I feel like from this entire point, the media, draft Twitter, fantasy analysts, whoever have liked Justin Fields more than the NFL has. They allowed him to drop for a reason. And so often when players are on their rookie contracts, teams go back to those pre-draft evaluations than they do about applying what they've shown on the field so far. And we like him for fantasy, but I think a lot of GMs will look at this Justin Fields last season and be like, they couldn't pass the ball at all. And he's taking absurd outlier level amount of sacks here. Yes. So yeah, I think to me, it's just, you're not winning this next year, free roll it and see if you can get one of these teams like the Panthers, the Colts, or somebody to trade up the Titans. And if their trade up rookie quarterback does not do well, all of a sudden you can be running into a situation like the Lions have or the Seahawks have where you have really high draft capital because the team that made an aggressive move has immediately backfired. And we see this with rookie quarterbacks all the time. I quickly also want to add that I think Matt Nagy during Justin Fields' rookie year was almost urban level Meyer bad in terms of like orchestrating that offense. And then again, it took them a handful of weeks to change anything. And once they did, we started seeing some really positive signs. And again, this is with a shit situation around him. And it almost certainly is going to be better heading into next year. Yeah, they tanked this year. They did. (laughs) 